welcome Maryland Congressman Chris Van Hollen. Four more years. A week ago today, Paul Ryan accepted his party's nomination for vice president. He's the chairman of the House Budget Committee. I lead the Democrats on the committee. We have sharp differences over policy, but we get along well. And I'll admit, I was glad Paul was picked. I hoped it would result in a serious debate about the choice before us. Then I heard his acceptance speech. It kept the fact checkers up all night. You remember the Republicans had this gigantic clock in the arena showing the size of the national debt. And Paul told America, if you elect Republicans, we can fix that. But if Paul Ryan was being honest, he would have pointed to that debt clock and said, we built that. Because, because here are the facts. When President Clinton left office, America had a projected surplus of trillions of dollars over the next decade. Then came two wars, two tax cuts tilted to the wealthy, and a new entitlement. Republicans didn't pay for any of it. Paul Ryan voted for all of it. On top of that, they left behind an economy in free fall. So when President Obama took office, the Republicans handed him the bill. Projected deficits of trillions of dollars. Congressman Ryan, America is literally in your debt. So, so President Obama went to work. He established a bipartisan commission to get smart folks from both parties to together to develop a plan to reduce the deficit and to grow jobs. And guess what? It worked. They produced a balanced bipartisan plan that would cut $4 trillion from the deficit. You know, lots of Republicans voted for it including Senator Coburn from Oklahoma. And Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan was on that commission. He voted against the plan. And last week, Paul Ryan criticized the president for not acting on the bipartisan plan that he himself opposed. Then, then he said President Obama doesn't have a plan to reduce the deficit. But the president does have a plan. Here it is, right here in my hand. The president submitted this plan to the Congress. It's on the internet. President Obama's plan uses the bipartisan commission's balanced approach. It reduces the deficit by more than $4 trillion cutting spending and, and asking those at the top to pay the same rates they did under President Clinton. When we created nearly 23 million jobs and balanced the budget. So when Paul Ryan told America that President Obama didn't have a plan, that was false. The truth is, he and Mitt Romney just don't like the president's plan. They both pledged, they pledged that they would never, never ask millionaires to pay one more dime to reduce our deficit. Mitt Romney even said he would reject a budget with $10 in spending cuts for every $1 in new revenue. 
And now a third grader can do the math. If you refuse to ask the wealthiest to pitch in, then you hit everybody else much harder. And that's exactly what the Romney-Ryan plan does. You know, they call their plan brave, bold, courageous. I ask all of you, is it bold to give millionaires another tax cut while forcing seniors to pay more for Medicare? Uh -huh. Is it brave to reward companies that ship jobs overseas while cutting education here at home? <laughs> and is it courageous to raise taxes on middle-class families while giving tax cuts to people with Swiss bank accounts? <laughs> look, look, Mitt Romney's and Paul Ryan's obsession with tax breaks for the wealthy is part of a rigid ideology. Give people like Mitt Romney a break and hope something will trickle down and lift others up. But this theory crashed in the real world. We all lived through the recession when jobs went down and the deficit went up. So when they say they'll turn around the economy, beware. They mean a U-turn back to the failed theory that lifted the yachts while the other boats ran aground. And don't, don't buy the lie that asking the wealthy to contribute more is about punishing success. It's about asking them to share responsibility for reducing the deficit. It's about growing the economy, not from the top down, but from the middle out and the bottom up making success possible for all Americans. This election is a choice. That choice will determine whether America is a place where people climb the ladder of opportunity and pull it up behind them, or whether America is a place where people who reach the top help the next person up. Which America do you believe in? You know the facts, you know the choice, and you know what we have to do. Re-elect Barack Obama.